Welcome back to ECE 320A. We're working through some review problems for exam number four. And in this particular video, we're working on problem number four of that exam. And this question is asking for a given transfer function. So now we have this system, H of S, and we're injecting into that system a sinusoid. And I don't like to mix frequency domain and time domain. So here is our input waveform in the frequency domain, and that's going to produce an output waveform. We're really only worried about not the complete solution for the output, but only the sinusoidal steady state. So we're assuming all the transients have died out, and those transients will be influenced by those poles. So we are going to have modes that were associated with e to the minus 2 and e to the minus 3t. The slowest of those is this e to the minus 2, and that has then a time constant tau of 1 half, and after five of those time constants, or after two and a half seconds, we're now effectively in sinusoidal steady state. We hit this system then with a cosine waveform of amplitude 3 and frequency of 4 radians per second. We only have to wait 3 seconds and we're in sinusoidal steady state. We are in 1% of that after 2.5 seconds. That's why I'm just saying 3 seconds. So within three seconds of exciting this system, H of S, with this sinusoid, we're now in sinusoidal steady state. So if we want to know what's happening for most of the time that this input is applied to this system, we can find that by just examining what is the sinusoidal steady state output. Now that we want that, what do we need to do? Well, we've already done most of the work. We know that the sinusoidal steady state output is actually going to be what we started with in amplitude at the input, which was 3, but it's going to be adjusted by the system H of S. As that signal goes through the system, the system actually amplifies or attenuates that signal, and it attenuates it based on how the magnitude of that transfer function behaves at 4 radians per second. And that's why we might be interested in the Bode plot. If you had the Bode plot, you would just look at the magnitude response and find what is its value at 4 radians per second. That might give it to you in dB. You could extract the absolute magnitude from that dB value, and that's now the number that you would numerically put in that scales the 3. Then we are not changing the shape, it's still a cosine, and it's shaking at the same frequency. If you start shaking a linear system at 4 radians per second, it's going to start moving in the steady state at that same frequency. We're not changing the frequency going through this linear system, and then we might be experiencing a little bit of a delay between the sinusoid that we apply, the cosine waveform at the input, and what we see at the output. They may not be lined up peak for peak and minimum to minimum. The output might be a little delayed from the input, and that seems to make sense. If you start shaking this, you're probably going to experience some delay as you go through that linear system. And the delay that you will experience is actually going to be associated with the phase of that system at J4. And that's really all there is to it. So now we need to evaluate this complex number, the transfer function H of S, evaluated at the frequency that we're shaking this system at, which is 4 radians per second, find the magnitude and the angle, and we're finished. So what we need to do is we need to find H of S when S is equal to J4, or everywhere we have an S in this transfer function, we replace it with J4. Or we now have 2 times J4 plus 1, 
all over j4 plus 2, j4 plus, wasn't it at 3? And now we simply have to do the complex algebra. We can find the magnitude of each of those factors. We can find the angle of each of those two factors. And once we do, you should find that H at J4 now has a magnitude in an absolute sense of 0.3688. So it's less than 1. It does get compacted or attenuated, this waveform, as it goes through. It started at 3, it's now going to be 36% of that or 37% of that amplitude when it finishes or comes out at the output side of that system. And it's going to be delayed by 40.6 degrees. And if we're now writing that, we now have 37% of 3 which is roughly 1, so we have 1.1 cosine 4t minus 40.6 degrees. That's typically the way that it's written, but it's kind of mixing notation. If you look at this, this is now radians per second times seconds. So this value inside the argument is actually in radians, and this one is in degrees. So if you're finding the cosine at a particular time, you need to make sure that the argument has consistent units. So you might have to convert this 40.6 into radians and then make sure you're calculating or your calculator is set to take the cosine of a radian angle. If you wanted to convert that 40.6 to radians, you know that there's pi radians in 180 degrees. Or this is now going to be 0 0.7086 radians. And if you wanted to, you could factor out a 4 from that 0 0.7086 to actually find the time shift or the time delay now what I'm saying is we have something like cosine of 4 t minus 0 0.7086 over 4, and that's now your delay. So 1 fourth of 0.7 is what you're experiencing in time of the delay in the sinusoidal steady state answer. That's more than you need to write down for your answer to this problem, but I thought while we're here, let's just try to learn a little bit more about what we're seeing.